Hey, what's up team? Welcome to the channel, The Modern Creative. My name is Eddie Gray. I'm gonna show you three ways to export your effects in Logic Pro. We're gonna make it easy as well. So here's the main crux of the problem. If I go ahead and export this audio track, let's say I'm sending this to a mixing engineer or a collaborator, I'm gonna go ahead and export this out, right? But when we listen to the signal, it sounds like this. There's no effects on it. It's not taking the signal that's sending to a bus and sending that back. And we're not getting the, the real picture that we painted. Here's what it should sound like. But again, the export process is not allowing us to include the reverb. And so it sounds dry like this. All right, so how do we rectify this issue? Couple ways. All right, you can see that I have an aux channel on my track header on the left-hand side. Now, the way I did that was when I created a bus in Logic Pro, it automatically assigns that to an aux track. So bus two was sent to bus two here, and now it's inside of the mixer, but it's not within the tracks area. It's not visually available on that screen. So what you're gonna wanna do is control click on the channel strip, and you'll see the option to create new track. Control T is the key command. That will bring the aux track into the tracks area. So now I've got both of these working in tandem. And all I have to do at this point is simply select track number two, which is the aux, make sure it's in focus, and then hit command E. And let's send this over to the desktop. And now this is a W, check it out. All right, so that's the first way. It's up to you how you do this. Just wanna make sure that I give all my people all the options and then they do what they need to do. My personal favorite is to run the same process of bringing the aux tracks from the mixer into the tracks area. And then what I do is I'll create a fa MIDI region. So it's just here for looks basically. And when I click on it, what I do is I internally bounce. So you can hit Control B or you go to File, Bounce, Regions in Place. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna take that content and it's gonna make it live within your session. So here's just the guitar dry. And here is the guitar signal being sent through the bus, here we go. Okay, and then if we listen to that together. So this is my personal favorite because now I can go back to the aux and delete any and all reverbs, delays, what have you that are sucking up resources. So that's what I like to do. Let me go ahead and command Z all this. All right, and then for our last option, number three, you're gonna wanna bounce the project and solo the aux. This is really good for track stacks. In fact, let me make one now. I'll go ahead and select all of these and I'll create a summing stack and we'll just call this group, and so let's listen to this. All right, so sometimes what happens is if you try and bounce a track stack like this, for whatever reason, it doesn't sound entirely the same. Right, the way that it's routed, things are not working. So what I would do if I were you, I would solo either the aux or the track stack in this case. And then if you have anything on the mastering chain, bypass that because when you bounce as a project, you're bouncing everything, all effects included. So listen to the signal now. All right, so that's what I want it to sound like. Again, when we bounce, it didn't sound like that before. What we're gonna do this time after bypassing all the effects on the master channel, we're gonna go ahead and solo this track stack. This is under the assumption that you have like 50 tracks, 100 tracks, and so you're gonna solo just the drums group or just the guitars group or whatever it is, and then hit Command B, and now we're inside of the bounce dialog window, and of course, we're gonna bounce in the same format that our session is in, so I'm at 48K, so we're gonna bounce at 48K, and let's go ahead and call this GRP test. I'm gonna send this over to the desktop. All right, let's take a listen here. Yeah, that's pretty much a facsimile. 
So then again, the benefit of this is I could delete all the plugins that are on all these guitars. Let's say there was a bunch of stuff, a bunch of process, and we can delete this, and this would free up our CPU to be able to work on other things. So it just depends on how you like to do things. This is a very individual decision. Like you'll probably want to use one for this scenario and three for case three scenario, whatever it is. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share. We got a lot more logic tips coming your way. If you like the content, go ahead and like, go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell. So when we drop the heat, you guys are the first to know. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Take care, see ya.